All right. My, my next guest, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, was on the very first interview show. And, and you know, I'm forever grateful to him for that. And I mean, he's just one of the funniest guys. You know, they always say that when they introduce a comedian. He was one of the funniest guys I know. This is really true. He is. He writes for Saturday Night Live now. Please welcome Hannibal Burris. What's up, everybody? Oh, you. They told me the camera guys told me I had to leave now. Oh, really? Yeah. You could have. You want me to stay? I mean, I'm, I'm used to you sitting right there. <laughs> this is awkward. You just, your show, you just, uh, I'm going to go stand in the corner. <laughs> oh, man. See, it says music mic stuff. I don't know how to. All right. Hannibal Burrs, that's actually a stage name. My real name is Hannibal the Entertainer. <laughs> but my agent said I should change it. He thought it sounded too Jewish. <laughs> oh, Hannibal's my real name. I was named after the General Hannibal. He was a military genius, but not too many people know about him, so I'm forever associated with Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> and Silas of the Labs. Not even a real dude. Why can't I be Hannibal from the A-Team sometimes? He was cool, he hung out with Mr. T, they went on missions and had fun. <laughs> Always have to have the same conversation with people about my name. Your real name is Hannibal? Yes, my real name is Hannibal. Your parents named you Hannibal? Yes, my parents named me Hannibal. So Hannibal is on your birth certificate? Yes, Hannibal is on my birth certificate. But why did you just ask me the same question in three different ways? <laughs> I want to choke that person to see how they handle that. Are you choking me right now? Yes, I'm choking you right now. Are you using your hands to apply force to my neck? Yes, I'm using my hands to apply force to your neck. Are you trying to stop the circulation of blood and oxygen to my brain so I'll pass out? Yes, I'm trying to stop the circulation of blood and oxygen to your brain so you'll pass out. Some of you might be wondering, Hannibal, you were choking that dude. Why was he still talking regular? And that was just a choice I made for that joke. Didn't feel like doing the choking voice. I just came back, I did some shows in Scotland, and that was interesting. Uh, it was cool, but it was all right. <laughs> Scotland is 98% white. I told my cousin that before I uh, went. He was like, you either gonna get laid a lot or not at all. <laughs> and it turned out to be not at all, so fuck Scotland. <laughs> It's a lot of fat girls in Scotland, though. It's like the Milwaukee of Europe. <laughs> that was an easy joke, and I still did it. Such an easy joke. I'm not above it. I'll take the easy ones. Oh, man. I'm happy to be in, in Chicago. It's a nice day, but I, I don't really, I'm not an outside person, really. People are like, it's a nice day. I'm like, yeah, so that'll I mean, it'll be a great breeze coming in while I'm taking a nap. <laughs> I just don't like outside, because I can't control what happens outside. Say you just want to enjoy the nice day, but some guy outside might have decided he wants to slap every fifth person. <laughs> now you've fallen victim to the 20% slapper, <laughs> and you could have just stayed in your apartment unslapped. <laughs> Was it worth it? People could just say stuff to you outside. You have to take it at home. I can control the information that comes to me. I don't have to check my phone. I have to look at the computer. But outside, somebody could just walk up to you. Hey, man, I hope you die young. You smell like shit. And then walk away. <laughs> now, your fresh air just came with a ruined state of mind for a week. You walking around. Am I going to die young? Do I smell like shit? <laughs> and you could just stay in your place with your psyche intact. I was living with a girl for a while in New York. She would walk around our place mad sometimes. I wouldn't know why she was mad. She was just walking around mad. And I don't play those games, so I would just trip her. <laughs> like, I don't know what you were mad about before, but I definitely know you're mad that I just tripped you. <laughs> now maybe you'll open up about it while you're icing your knee. <laughs> she would get upset 
because I would come home late, like three in the morning. Where were you? Where were you? It's three. Like, stop focusing on the time. You realize I could do bad stuff and still make it home at seven o'clock. <laughs> My activities aren't determined by the time. I do bad stuff at one in the afternoon. <laughs> well, what would you do if I stayed out to three in the morning? I play video games and celebrate your absence. <laughs> I get ticked off by little stuff. Like, it was this guy in front of a bar. He had the cordless phone from the bar in between his ear and his shoulder like that, but he didn't have anything in his hands. <laughs> and that really upset me. It's like, dude, that action is for people that are multitasking. Where's your other task? <laughs> I was just hoping somebody would throw a pumpkin at him. Yeah, I'm still here. Somebody just threw a pumpkin at me, but you know what my phone technique is. I keep the phone between my ear and my shoulder no matter what is going on in my life because you never know when somebody's going to throw something at you that you need to catch with both of your hands. I was leaving work, and uh, I got on the elevator, and it stopped at 3, and a dude got on, and he was like, thank you. And I was like, what are you thanking me for, man? I don't work in the elevator. It's not Mad Men. Why are you even talking to me? <laughs> Why are you talking to me on the elevator, dude? I don't want a small thank you. Like, what is your life like when you're thanking people when you get on the elevator? Like, do, ev does everybody else usually push you off of the elevator <laughs> as soon as you get on? Like, come on, man. You know, you know the rules, dog. You can't get on this elevator, man. Look at your face. Even if he's the first person on the elevator and somebody else gets on, they like, dog, you got to get off the elevator, man. <laughs> I like my job, man, right? We have interns. You tell them to do stuff and they do it. It's great. You got to be nice to them. Right? This guy faxed something. Hey, man, fax that for me. I gave him another page. Hey, fax something for yourself, too. <laughs> I got in an argument with my coworkers about the movie Up. It got heated. I enjoyed Up, but they were like, did you cry when you saw Up? And I was like, nah. And they were like, why not? Like, because I'm a grown man and that's a cartoon. <laughs> and I don't cry when I see cartoons. They're like, what about that montage they showed when his wife was alive and then she died? You didn't cry? No, I didn't cry during that, because I know real people that have died, real human beings. They were alive and not alive anymore. I'm not crying over this dude's plight. He's a Pixar character. His head is the same size as his body. I have nothing in common with him. <laughs> I enjoyed the movie. Is it not enough that I suspended this belief when his house was lifted out of the ground by hundreds of balloons? <laughs> Ain't even account for plumbing or anything. It was a good movie. But I watched it and I went about my day and did regular stuff. When you watched it, you had to go to a cafe and journal and weep about it. I realized recently my judgment gets messed up more by food and juice than it does by drugs or alcohol. Like, I love apple juice. I think it's delicious. I want to start my own apple juice company. I don't know how you go about doing that. I try emailing the Mott's people for advice. They're not really accessible, so I have to keep being a consumer. <laughs> Me and my girl go to the grocery store. Mott's Fresh Press Natural Apple Juice, $1.79 for a half gallon. That's a great sale. We get eight bottles. Eight bottles is all we got on the belt in front of us. This old man looking back, shaking his head like, nah, nope. Nah, I'm like, what's wrong, old man? You mad because we got all this apple juice? Because you can go get some, too. It's over there now, four. But if not, stop judging us, because hell yeah, we hoarding apple juice. <laughs> Taking advantage of this stale before this store realized what a horrible mistake they've made. <laughs> and you know what, man? We're back here happy with our apple juice, and you're up there lonely with your Hormel chili, you lonely Hormel chili eating old man. And it took me a minute to realize he wasn't shaking his head because of the apple juice. He was shaking his head because my girlfriend was white. He didn't agree with that. But I was so caught up in the euphoria of having all that apple juice that for like a minute, I lived in this world where racism didn't exist. I was like, it's obvious that this old man is just an apple juice hater. And he's just really mad because he can't acquire all the apple juice that I'm a crying right now. Hey, thanks a lot, y'all. Yeah. <laughs>